Okay, and welcome back. Our number three, it's our first report of the year 2015 on Fukushima. But more than that, it's a report on what's happening here in the western part of North America. Ultimately, of course, all of North America, as the continuing bioaccumulation presents more obvious signs of die-offs, of uh, really corrupted biology in the biosphere everywhere you look. It's just There's no way to get away from it. The latest from Japan is really grim. They are now admitting that the corium, that's the melted fuel assemblies, in at least one, if not three, of the reactors, is now being found floating in the Pacific Ocean. Plutonium from the core assemblies, the fuel rods, those MOX fuel rods most likely, Plutonium is now being found floating in the Pacific. Uh, another story, Fukushima radiation killing off Pacific Coast seabirds. We know about that. Uh, Dana Durnford has been reporting on that. His research is coming up with uh, grimmer and grimmer information all the time. Radiation in the North Pacific salmon population will exceed safe limits. Now, this is an interesting admission. It's going to pretty much wipe out the salmon industry, as we told you would happen. These are not surprises if you've been paying attention. Look at the top center column. I put up news stories nearly every day, thanks to Professor Wilcox, especially in Japan. Thank you, Rick, for your contributions uh, and others. They are uh, very important. This is uh, crazy. And on top of all of it, Japan and Shinzo Abe are are moving toward what? Uh, the insanity of restarting their nuclear plants. They say, well, we're going to rebuild some of them. They're a little old, so we'll put new reactors in them. The Japanese haven't learned a thing, nothing. And Ukraine, with one of the largest nuclear reactors in the world, has shut it down after an enormous leak, which apparently went 14 times over maximum safe allowable limits of radiation. That we have nuclear trouble all over the place. And this is just what we know about. Uh, back with us tonight. Hopefully we can hear him all right. In Thailand somewhere, that beautiful nation, is Yoichi Shimatsu. Are you there, my friend? Can you hear me? Well, I can barely hear you. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, we haven't had some good luck with uh, the telecom lines of late. Uh, you know, besides the holiday traffic overload on the satellites. So obviously, there's been these solar flares where there's been assisted by the breakdown of the ozone overhead in the atmosphere. And uh, so our phone transmissions have not been too good. Can you hear me okay? I hear you. Okay. You're okay. actually you're sounding very good. I'll have uh, Todd uh, turn, okay, me, turn, yeah. turn me up uh, maximum to okay. Yochi and see so if you can So the relays are better. good in your direction, not so good in this direction. Yeah. A lot of damage, I think, being inflicted on our satellites. Which break, brings us to the whole problem. You know, Fukushima, the radiation is just gradually breaking down everything uh, all over the northern hemisphere, parts of the southern hemisphere by now. Uh, yeah, we're moving into a real global crisis of Fukushima. And as uh, you pointed out in this report of plutonium, you know, uh, plutonium riding on top of the waters of the North oh. Pacific Current, heading yeah. over to the United States, yeah. uh, this was really unthinkable to scientists of all sorts, you know, oceanographers, physicists, chemists, but it's happened, and uh, we're seeing that there were releases, as we pointed out very early that first year, four, nearly four years ago, that there were raw chunks of plutonium rating bursting out of the plant, but also uh, in the releases, you know, I mean, these were more than steam releases. We're seeing, you know, uh, I, uh, a nucleotide being released in nearly gaseous in gas form, in a plasma form, hitting the upper atmosphere, getting very cold up there, and forming these nanoparticles that right. came down to Earth and also to the ocean. But the amazing thing is, despite their weight and their mass and their fall, they did not think into that water. In <laughs> fact, it floated on top of the water. Yeah. Uh, and I think it has something to do with the fact that they react with the uh, the metal of salt in the water. Uh, a lot of these isotopes were salt in form. 
Uh, they came down and sort of like cloud, uh, you know, mist down to a heavy mist down to the ocean surface. And mm-hmm. somehow we're able to form, uh, to, mm-hmm. uh, remain on the surface in suspension. So unlike all the predictions, uh, the, the, the plutonium uranium particles did not sink to the bottom of ocean and be covered by sediment when in fact they're, they're floating very slowly. So uh, this is the heaviest of the material on the surface of the water toward the North Pacific coast, which is devastating. And probably a lot of that material has already reached there, which will explain these massive kill-offs. There's just been another species of birds. They're finding carcasses of these birds from British Columbia down to Mexico, all across the North Pacific coast. Dead birds, no virus detected, no diseases, uh, falling like flies. Uh, and again, uh, uh, they were apparently all emaciated. They died of starvation, lack of insects in their feed, and the insects obviously affected by the uh, radiation in their environment. So the kill-off continues, yet one more species is going down. Yep, yep, yep. It's, uh... So that's the news of the new year, not very good. The no. old year ended a, a, really on a bad note, a, a very powerful earthquake. Uh, rocking the heck out of the Fukushima plant, which is basically now defenseless. There were no workers there at the plant. They all took off for the holidays. So, ah. You know, the Tokyo Electric Power is just thrown in the towel. They're basically yeah. not doing anything. There's nothing left to You're do right. with their tanks. You're right. Their storage tanks are leaking. The ice wall has failed. They're just letting the radioactive water go straight into the Pacific, highly radioactive. They have to let the tanks leak. And they're, uh, probably have already started draining some, uh, in order so they can weld them back together and refill them. Uh, and there's, we're not getting a lot of reports out of there. No one's there. You know, there's not a lot of engineers there. It's just the situation is now total wreckage. And, uh, this does not bode well. So, and, and yet on the other hand, we're getting these reports out of the United States, you know, out of these new TV online video online you know, which are very difficult. Uh, Dr. Wilcox traces one major website, uh, all financed by nuclear industry, saying, well, we don't have to worry about radiation. You know, there's radiation coming, being detected off the uh, coast, of the, uh, off the West Coast, but in such low concentrations, we don't have to worry. That's the standard line. Of, that's their only line of defense, in fact. That's it. Just really empty reassurances. And now we're finding out there's pellets, there's tiny micro and nanoparticles of plutonium coming across. And so these, you know, it doesn't take many hot particles, a steady wave of these. We see reports saying, oh, everything's going to plateau in 2015, this year and next year. I mean, is it going to peak? And the, and the wrong word is peak. It might plateau, but it's not going to peak. And if anything, on the North Pacific side, it's not going to be good because it's going to be accumulation. It doesn't matter how much is flowing in because whatever flows in is added on top of what's already there on the beaches, in the estuaries, in exactly. the forest. In the, yeah. you, know, you know, it, it builds up. That's the, whole the whole coastal point. plain. So these most unscientific, just unscientific reports on these so-called science websites, science, uh, you know, uh, video programs, completely, you know, just so fundamental, so basically off, you know, uh, it's in the realm of nonsense. Uh, a lot of money behind that. Too. You know, we talk about uh, cesium-134, 137. Uh, they're mentioning yeah. now, and they're admitting that the melted reactor is the corium, down deep enough to be yeah. washed directly into the ocean by the undercurrent mm-hmm. of water, the groundwater from the mountains going mm-hmm. down and flowing through the plant pushing the corium particulates into the ocean. This is just amazing. Yes, plutonium, uh, 239, uh, plutonium 240, but nobody talks about the up to 200 other types of radionuclides, which right. can also be deadly, which are also being pushed into the water 24 hours a day. Nobody talks about Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the total sum of it is massive. In fact, some of these, Nanoparticles have been identified in Ibaragi province and Fukushima province as sort of bundles, which they can't really figure out. Some of these things are not, some of these uh, nuclear isotopes are not 
supposed to take solid form. It's supposed to remain a plasma. Uh-huh, it's uh-huh. puzzled science at, at Tsukuba University. They're just puzzled. The stuff is unprecedented. It's in metallic form and in, in not an alloy, but in a, what do you call it, a conglomeration that, uh, of, of metal, some of which are not supposed to exist as solid particles, mm-hmm. highly radioactive and uh, present in the soil of Toby. This is what's floating in the Pacific, and this completely overturned all the claims that nothing broke out of containment. Okay, that's the claim, the mantra we've been hearing. A lot of the people who repeated that mantra have gone silent. We haven't heard much from them lately. And this is just clear evidence. Containment was clearly cracked open. Uh, this stuff is floating across, it's leaking out through the water, and it broke out atmospherically into these nanoparticles, which can float, okay, which can float despite their heavy mass. They form uh, in suspension with the salt water. You know, uh, uh, there's a right. lot of, you know, the salt water in the Pacific, as, as, as everyone knows who's been to Hawaii and all that, is very dense. You know, it's hard to, it, uh, you float better there than you would in a lake in the, the Lake Superior or somewhere. Uh-huh. Your flotation is better. <laughs> and because of that, this stuff is able to float across. So you're getting intact uranium, plutonium, americium, neptunium, on, like you say, on and on, hundreds of isotopes in these nanoballs, which the Japanese scientist at Cuba said is just impossible to wash out or extract from the soil. They can't how, figure how, out how, how could you? to do that. It's not possible. It's, no way. And they all have different possible. half-lives, all of them. All of them. Mm-hmm. So. And so this is deadly new form of radioactive pellet that scientists cannot understand how it's created. It was created out of plasma, obviously. <laughs> plasma which suddenly uh-huh. froze when it hits the upper atmosphere. Uh, so, it's, uh, it's really, uh, so. this is unprecedented, unique. Yeah, this is beyond, this we're in, is we're in no man's imagining. land. We don't know. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, you figure the plutonium pieces that got blown out of reactor three, that uh, Toshiba reactor three, would have just hit the ocean and sank. That was my initial presumption. And then it might affect, those particles might affect the Pacific on the Western Pacific, you know, by being pushed exactly. along with the current. Well, they no should have gone down into the trench, but they didn't. Exactly, exactly. Some of that did. Some of that did. Other tons of that, that did. But no one expected nanoparticles of plutonium, uranium, and all these other isotopes, very highly radioactive isotopes with long, very long uh, half-lives floating to the, across on the North Pacific current. This we was could, unimaginable almost, yeah. to all scientists until this report came out, and then the mechanism we know is from that study that was done by Tsukuba University in Iraq, which detected these nanoballs yeah. and uh, you know uh, imaged them and all that. I know it's amazing. Let's uh, let's jump up uh, the coast here and see if Dana Durnford is online and standing by Great. somewhere yeah, off here, the bro. British Columbia coast. Are you there, Dana? Can you hear me? Hi, Jeff. Yes, I can. Thank you. Hey, so Yoshi is here too. Here. Hey, Yoshi. Happy I New Year to you. Name wrong. Happy Sorry, New Year yeah, we were just talking. I don't know if you were listening in or not about what's uh, what's I, I in the would. water. Yeah, yeah, right there at the top. Uh, God knows how many hundreds of nuclides. Right. Uh, and then some of them seemingly almost mag. Let's just imagine we're dealing with the positive and negative polarities of magnets. They're attracted to the the, the algae, the microplankton, and they stick to it. Uh, there are all kinds of mechanisms by which this stuff stays up on top or very near the top. It's just not found deep. Yeah, it's one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. And it's a thousand times smaller than the dust that floats around in your home after you clean the spot. Wow. Every day. And so this stuff also because of the salt water they sprayed on the reactors because everything got smashed up and cut off and 500 miles of coastline was wiped out. There's no way to get in there. They use salt water and, and the sulfur created these uh, peroxide hydrogen buckyballs and they were able to ingest the elements, the particles, the atoms, and they're not solutable in water. And so it was easy for them to transport, apparently. They're very transportable not only with the ocean, but to uh, the wind, and, and, but they will rain out on top of the ocean. They're so light, they'll, 
So it's like a snowstorm, and instead of sinking into the ocean, it piles up on top of the ocean like snow would do on land. In, in a like, but it's on a, like a nano scale, like the ocean was saying uh, earlier there. And so some of it, of course, will sink and get washed down because it'll aggregate with other particles and it'll fall down. But because it's so tiny, whatever particle it was, was used in tiny two, mm -hmm. the cold water nutrients will bring it back up to the surface, and if it gets liberated, then it can hang out again. And even the stuff that washed down in the, the mountains, everything on the west side of the Rocky Mountains washed towards the Pacific, and then on the east side of the Rocky Mountains went towards the Atlantic and the Gulf, well, that stuff would have come down and could be liberated back onto the coastline and get picked up in rainstorms and deposited back down onto the surface over and over and over. And that's probably what wiped out the phytoplankton, because they hang out at the surface, and that's where they're feeding to and growing up to. And so, you know, that's why we're seeing that annihilation of all the other species. That's why all those birds, they died, they were nothing to feed on, because the basis of the food chain, the phytoplankton, the krill, uh, were all dependent upon that zone. Yeah. And so the birds that, are, like I say, are 700 kilometers of coastline, I never seen a single flock of birds. And when I finally did, first time since, and I know I made a mistake last time, I was saying since May, I did out there, I don't know how I'll come up with that one. I was out there since the end of June of last year. And uh, Lane came up and visited one of the donors, uh -huh. extraordinarily nice people. She reminded me of that one. Now, the problem is, of course, this has been going on for like, for almost four years at this stage. And TEPCO, had, like you were saying earlier, they had abandoned the plant, and everybody suspects that's been going on for a long time, and this stuff is unmitigated at this stage. There's no way to control it anyway, and nobody really believes they were really storing that stuff. It's like a fable because of the duct tape and all the other things they were doing. It is. No indication it is. It's a fraud. It's yeah. just a fraud. People were working in those areas, so if there was heavy leaks there, they couldn't have worked there. And so it just looks like a picture they painted, same as Building 4, in my opinion. It's just a picture they painted to distract from 1, 2, and 3. And, uh, you know, I watched National Geographic uh, on Focus Channel, and they keep referring to Building 4 as just a fire, but the building actually, as you know, and everybody else knows, detonated. And I thought that was really intriguing and Unit 4 had a huge inventory in its uh, fuel pools that huge. detonated and exploded. Huge. And went all over that site as you, you guys, you flushed But, but don't worry, pool. Dana. TEPCO assures us that they removed every last bit of it from the spent fuel pool. It's all safely <laughs> gone now. <laughs> How do you keep a uh, TEPCO executive out of your back garden? you got to hang up? one of them in your front garden. Ah. <laughs> like a scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. That's just a joke, folks. Please I don't hang it. them. Yeah, yeah. Not unless you do it legally, and I'm sure you could if you tried really hard to everybody out there. It's, uh, but, it really is amazing. You, you made a point, and we've been trying to make this point as well, Dana, that the, the phytoplankton and the krill, but the phytoplankton are, are everywhere. They are what the smallest species eat, and it goes from and there. The and, and they also sequester carbon. They're the biggest carbon sequester out there, the biggest oxygen producer on this planet. And yeah. they're the very basis of the food chain. Without them, everything else will fall. That's what we're looking at. Now, are they actually being fall. eradicated, or are they just becoming irradiated? Eradicated. They're so small that, that uh, they, they're not. They can't bioaccumulate it. They actually get popped like a popcorn. Huh. They can't. They can't come close to it. So if they drift past uh, the elements that are uh -huh. putting out the vegetables, uh -huh. they're done. They get fried, and just you know, like. These elements, folks, will say a beckle is like a grain, it'll flip over a grain of sand. Well, that don't sound like a lot to me or you, but it's something that's extraordinarily tiny, that's huge troubles. And so these things will do that till the end of time. And so in their lifetime, they can eradicate an amazing amount, just one single atom with the uh, isotope in it can, over its lifetime, set free in the air. Hmm. Of course, when you take a gram, it's, um, it's more atoms and the, all the grains of sand and all the beaches combined. And each reactor had around 3,450 assemblies, 80 rods in each assembly. Each rod is 12 feet long. Each rod weighs 18 pounds. So even just a single rod out of 280,000 rods that were actually in the reactors at the time, mm -hmm. the cores of the reactors, when they melted down the coriums, everything they chewed up around them, the rocks and the metal and parts of the building that fell in on top of them, is also atoms. And 
elements. And so they become ionized and radiated, too. Mm-hmm. And so it's like a whole different inventory. And when you spray the salt water on it, those sulfur peroxide buckyballs created from the molecules have become ionized and elemented or radiated elements, too. And so we're, we're like a lot... When people think of the inventory, they think of the fuel rods themselves, which is just unimaginable. Each reactor, is, is, you know, just not counting the fuel pool, but each reactor is around 2 billion times more atoms than all the grains of sand and all the beaches on this planet combined. Wow. And so that's enough to give every mammal, every animal, every human cancer many times mm-hmm. over. Mm-hmm. And cancer takes a long time to manifest. But the, the phytoplankton, we're talking about in a constant invisible snowstorm floating around this planet. And so some people that are really high up in this had said that March, April, May of 2011, everybody in North America ingested at least 10 radioactive hot particles, hot particles every day. And a single hot particle is a guaranteed cancer. As Dr. Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute in New Mexico had showed by studying killing the beagle dogs for 35 years by making them ingest americium and plutonium, that even the smallest atom would kill the animals in their four years, 70% of them, and give them serious tumors, serious cancers. Yeah. Of course, and that's why we've had no baby orca beyond three. one year of age since three. 311. That's a good point, yeah. And they're, they're on the way out. Thing, of course. Yeah. That's shocking. That's unimaginable. And people just don't understand. And I tell people up here... And it shocks them. And that's something that resonates with everybody because the killer whale, of course, is so famous. That truly is one of the few things that I see can reach into people. But, you know, we'll come up to a commercial by the sounds of it. You know, I got this whole town here and I've been stuck up here in bad weather and I get out for a little bit and I'm stuck in bad weather, freezing temperatures. Now we got freezing rain and snow. And the weather's just going to break for the next couple of weeks. So, really good shape to get out here and hit this coastline, but there's nothing out there. So just documenting it at this stage, hopefully, you know, by the time we go down the coastline, this planet starts to, you know, try to come up with the future. And just to touch on one more point, you know, you were talking about the studies earlier, how nobody reads the studies. Well, the studies are all locked away, folks. Your universities produce a study, and then Elsewhere, Springer and Wiley, the three biggest publishing houses on the planet with 20,000 outlets, mm-hmm. gets the copyrights for free. And that's why nobody can <laughs> or hear about a lot of these studies because mm-hmm. they're locked away if you're on a paywall. And a lot of these studies could be ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 just to get in there and browse, let yeah. alone read. Very so good point. The average person. Yeah, yeah, very good point. Stand by. Dana will come right back. Okay. Yochi and I will continue with all of you folks as we step into the year 2015, the year the Pacific died. Be back in a minute. In addition to all of its other troubles, Ukraine is having nuclear reactor problems. On December the 3rd, this is the third largest plant, I believe, or fifth in the world. One of its reactors shut down. It tripped on November the 28th. It was announced on December the 3rd. They didn't go after uh, much in the way of detail to report to us. The actual report was made by Ukrainian Prime Minister Ratsenyuk. And then on December 28th, one of the reactors, the same nuclear power plant, was automatically shut down after another glitch. This was the second halt in operations at that plant in a month. Okay? Now, let's take it another step further. It's hard to get information out out of Ukraine. Documents reveal radiation spike at the world's, it was the fifth largest nuclear plant. If the government reports are accurate, It's 16 times over the government limit of safe, if there is such a thing. There is no such a thing. It's safe levels of radiation exposure. So that right there is a lie. Whenever you hear about safe levels of radioactivity, forget it. They're lying to you. It's all cumulative. There is no safe exposure to radiation or x-rays or any other kind of ionizing radiation. I think we lost Dana there. Are you are you there, Dana, or did we lose Yoshi? No, I'm here. Yeah, that was Yoshi. 
Oh, okay. Uh, so Ukraine, the fifth largest plant in the world, Dana, 16 times over safe limits. Whenever I hear the term safe limits, I just want to puke. But this government, not yours, but ours, I I guess maybe the Canadians did the same thing. What the Obama administration did was raise these so-called safe levels of exposure to scores of radioactive nuclides in the water, in the air, in the the plant material you eat, in meat. meat. Don't forget, you eat meat, you're eating the plants. Again, a very weak signal. Okay, we got you back, Yochi. Uh, I've just been running down the... Okay. You got me? Okay, you can hear me, I think. Uh, we we're just talking about, yeah, I can hear you now. We we're just talking about Ukraine, 16 times over the government limit of safe exposure levels. There are no safe oh, exposure yeah. levels. This is one of the biggest lies of the whole nuclear age. Right. Right, you know what? And uh, they're re-nuclearizing in very dangerous ways. Thanks to Toshiba Westinghouse. As you know, Westinghouse, uh, you know, that was a company that uh, was essentially by Tesla, uh, became corporatized, and then Toshiba is the majority shareholder, owns about 70% of the shares. Oh, I didn't know that. All right. Westinghouse and... Uh, Mm-hmm. Yeah, Toshiba uses Westinghouse basically to peddle his technology. It's uh, basically his mock, uh, you know, mixed fuel uh, reactors. You know, it's trying to convert uh, any reactor that could be converted to mock. And Ukraine has four major nuclear uh, plants there with these, they're called VVER. Uh, they're uh, pressurized water reactors, which uh, can be converted to mock. Fuel. Uh-huh. And the reason uh, Toshiba Westinghouse wants to convert Ukraine to uh, mock fuel is basically to get rid of plutonium. They need to get rid of all this uh, waste material. Oh, it's, nuclear, it's more nuclear waste. Fuel sure. Pools, you know, yeah, yeah, around yeah. the world. Yeah. Yeah, mock fuel is kind of a way to dump nuclear waste on unsuspecting countries, you know, where the political leadership isn't very bright. You give them a reactor. And you say, oh, this is a more advanced kind of fuel out. But basically, uh-huh. you're dumping the plutonium uh-huh. onto them, mm-hmm. okay? You're waste plutonium onto them. Because there's a lot of waste plutonium there in civilian plants. So Ukraine is very desperate. They're deeply in debt, uh, uh, about $200 million in debt. The IMF and the World Bank had to cut off further lending to them, you know, because they can't make their payments. They're uh, so, so bankrupt. That's the fact, you know, that's funny. the fact of Ukraine. The one thing you hear in the media is everything is Russia, 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 how bad Russia is. They don't explain what's going on in Ukraine. The country's totally broke. Uh, it's been mismanaged. Uh, the, the prime minister, uh, yes, no, he, he's a, a banker. You know, he's, he's a banker. He's in with the bank. <laughs> the country treasury's basically been looted. Uh, they can't make any payments, so the guy's going to eat. And they're so desperate now since they cannot save them. Just but unfortunately, this was a country that was saved by nuclear. If you remember Chernobyl, it was also destroyed by nuclear. So this vast uh, these accidents down at uh, their southernmost plant uh, is very difficult to play. I call it Plant Z. The thing for you is Z. Plant Z. Uh, you had two successive uh, accidents in December and uh, November, late November and December. Of the, of the plant. All right. He's, These uh, new Westinghouse, uh, house, uh, Toshiba Westinghouse fuel rods that were shipped over. They sent over some like 40 rods. So, you know, okay, Yoshi. Rods. Uh, Yoshi. So I assume there was no manpower at these plants that. Have these accidents, yeah. yeah. Watch, down. watch and out for the, watch out for the, they, watch out for the buttons on your cell phone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, these are not buttons on my cell phone. These are okay. Just, yeah, yeah. They're just tones. So this right. is the, I think, the problem in Ukraine is that they're playing around fire here. They're playing around plutonium. 
because the purely because the political leadership doesn't uh-huh. have money. Uh-huh. Uh, they want nuclear power. Nuclear power supplies uh, fifty percent of their electricity. They run run that up to eighty ninety percent, and they seem to be accepting. No one's talking. There's a lot of non transparency in all of this, but there's apparently their energy uh, minister blurted out something about there's a plan to build one of the world's largest nuclear facilities uh, uh, near Odessa, you know, it's between uh, Crimea and Odessa. And this will be not just uh, mega reactors, but there's going to be a vast waste repository there. Too big for Ukraine. I see. So uh, and it's going to be right near a port. Uh-huh. So we can assume this is the trade-off. You, Ukraine gets mocked. Fuel technology, fuel rods, very cheap nuclear plants. And they take all the garbage. For storing nuclear weapons, away from Japan and the U.S. And probably some of that will be the Fukushima, you know, these uh, rods that will be buried in Ukraine. You know, this is also Vietnam. They're accepting a raw deal like this, a very, very bad deal. Again, political leadership that doesn't know anything about these issues. Uh, no, I'll just do what they're told, yeah. that's uh, all. Oh, hold on a minute, Yoshi, we have to pause. We'll come right back with Dana as we continue. Okay. We're putting a story up this evening by Michael Snyder. 11 predictions of economic disaster in 2015 from top experts all over the globe. Okay, well, uh, Snyder's a good writer, so this will be well worth reading. I just got it. Listen, the idea of eating fish. Pe- people are still eating seafood. Uh, Dana, out of the Pacific. The industry, I don't know what it's down, maybe what, 5%? That's all. It's surviving. No one's talking. And there are these salmon farms. I don't know. Do they have salmon farms in the ocean, confined by nets, or is it all inland in holes in the ground? No, the coastline's got a, a lot of these things. Uh, the big nets out in the ocean, they have a, a lot of escapes out of those nets. A lot of these salmon are genetically modified salmon, and those whole areas are are polluted areas because of all the stuff they put in there, the antibiotics and everything. It's just... Oh, yeah, they're feeding them all food. kinds of things. Even cow, cattle blood goes in there. Remnants yeah, from just, pig factories, cow slaughterhouses, it doesn't matter. They're all great big, huge animals. Uh, I do know they've been laying off a lot of workers instead of increasing it. The future was supposed to be huge on farmed fish, you know, in the ocean. Yeah, and I know people that work in that industry work out there on those farms. Uh, as I was coming to the coastline, I got a chance to visit one. Of them. They were telling me that they were surprised because they had built up all these places and bought all these licenses and plants and hired all these people, and all of a sudden they just start cutting back. And there was nobody really knows what's going on. I think they're predicting themselves what's going on. It's not going to be sustainable. Uh, you know, everything we're seeing is the indication that the ocean is well on its way into that extinction level event. Of course, what I'm looking at is just, whew, it's really something to look at that. You know, I went, those pools. I was in a pet store recently and I, I used to own pet stores and I would always yeah. be keenly observant of the ingredients in pet foods most of which is unfit for your pet to even go near, let alone eat. You want to yeah. kill your pet off early, feed him commercial I grade. I cook all the meals for Zoe and myself. Everything. There you go. Every single mm-hmm. meal. Yeah. That's it. Very they gosh. should be eating proper, organic, wholesome human food. Now, most of them yeah. have, uh, they'll call it uh, salmon, and they make it sound like it's a great thing. But they don't tell you where the salmon comes from. And they don't talk about anything. The only food you dare give your pet is 100% organic food, yes. guaranteed non-GMO. Uh, otherwise, your pet's gonna you're gonna watch your pet fade away years too early. Not fun. Huge <laughs> problems with your fur too. Yeah. Yeah. If you give them GMO, you'll see it right away. Fur gets really dry. Yep. Really falling out everywhere. Feed them organic; it'll clean it right up in three or four or five weeks. And 
you know, there's already damage done if you've been feeding them GMO, but it's still okay to, to, to switch it off and give them normal food. Cause they will have a, a relatively normal life after that. It, it makes a huge difference, yeah. You exactly. That's the big thing. People don't even understand how the GMO, how the glyphosates and the formaldehydes, how they stop the uptake of nutrients in the body, and so that applies to your pets too, folks. And your pet, you might try to do everything you can right for the pet, but if you if you slip in that GMO, you're taking away everything good you're doing unknowingly, and that's the problem. That's what makes it so hideous and so demented. The scientists knew exactly. They actually engineered. You know, the calcium, the magnesium, the iron, the cobalt, the carbon, everything out of it and left just tiny parts per million left over. Like calcium, there was 6,000 parts per million plus uh, in, in corn. And they engine it down to 114 parts per million. They engineered out all the calcium. And they've done the same thing with the p- potassium. And the equivalent is around 400 GMO corn they get the same amount of calcium as in a single organic corn on the cob. So you have to fill up your truck with corn on the cob made by GMO, big and beautiful. In other words, food that doesn't have little rotten patches on it, uh, GMO won't have rotten patches on it very often, but organic has rotten patches, and you've got to chop them out, and that's just normal. It's always been that way. Correct. And so when you, yeah. Yeah, when you see that, you know you're into the organic. You, you, usually... This stuff in uh, supermarkets looks like it came off the cover of Sunset Magazine. It's just perfect. <laughs> yeah. And when you That's see exactly perfect, the way to say it, yeah. there's nothing <laughs> there. It's uh, devoid of nutrition. It's full of GMOs in most cases and worse. Uh, uh, the average head yeah, of lettuce, years ago, the average head of iceberg lettuce was sprayed 13 times with herbicides and pesticides and God knows what else. Uh, uh-huh. before it hit the salad bowl. You want to eat that? You want to feed that to your children? Uh, grow your own organically in a covered greenhouse. Get the soil. You got to get good soil and keep it clean. Don't let the rain get on it. If you've got a well, use well water only. You just got, you've got to. You got to be careful. Dana, you take care of yourself. Thank you very much Thank for you. the report. Okay. Talk, talk okay. to you next okay. week and, uh, and you be careful. I'll be out there. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be on the go. could be a couple of weeks at a time now because we got to get the job done before spring. So All take right. care, folks, and thanks again, Jeff. Yep. Okay. Bye-bye. Good night. All right. You there, Yoshi? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, I uh, wish uh, him a happy new year. Uh, uh, let's hope his adventures can be as mentioning the harsh winter weather can resume when it's a little bit uh, nicer outside. The waves aren't so high. Jeez, he's and on that. He's on that boat. Not so strong and not so much radiation to me. He's on that yeah, boat and it's hard. below freezing and it's uh, snowing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of radiation in that. Uh, whatever comes down is bringing stuff in from Fukushima. You know, Fukushima yeah. is just uh, spewing out stuff. Unrelent, uh, unrelenting, and no one's even attempting to stop. Uh, they don't know, have a plan. They do so not have a plan. Serious situation. And no. coming over to, yeah, it's coming over North America, the Midwest of America. I understand once again, massive weather, and once again, we can expect those strange uh, late winter uh, weather phenomena that have hit since Fukushima. All these disturbances with the loss of the ozone hill and all the irradiation in the environment. And you were mentioning fish. You know, uh, the Japanese, uh, there are some Japanese, not many anymore, who like to eat their tuna, uh, a very expensive meal, uh, with the new year, you know, like on the second, third. So they have an auction yeah. every year at Tsukiji, the big world oh, yeah. fish market. Yeah. This year, the big tuna fetch $37,000 for one fish. But, and uh, it seems astonishing, but the backstory to that, they used to go for twice or three times that much money, okay? Twice uh-huh. or three times that much money. So obviously the demand for tuna worldwide in Japan is not what it used to be. In fact, uh, when you go to Japan, you see, even at the cheaper shops, very large servings of tuna. They're trying to get rid of it as much as they can. They get some from the South Pacific. But I think the Japanese public, uh, many of the people who used to gorge on the stuff 
spend a lot of money, realize that it's radioactive now. Nearly all the in the world is radioactive by now because they're high up on the food chain. So, so while there are still the enthusiasts who don't seem to care and not worry about the health, and there are those people who are, let's say, fundamentally suicidal. They could care less. You know, they don't watch it. It's like people who engage in unsafe sex all over the place. There are a lot of people who don't mind dying until they start dying. You know, they don't take any precautions. Really they don't want to do stuff in their faces mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. all the seafood. And, uh, all the I, other I, dangerous I, stuff that you mentioned. Just now. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to know what... Well, it looks good, tastes delicious. They don't care what went into it, you know? Uh, they don't. The threat that's there. And that's the way to threat your face. It's ingestion. It's inside your body. It doesn't get more dangerous than that. It becomes your body, you know? Those proteins become their body. And unfortunately, it's bringing in a lot of dangerous stuff. Radiation being the top of the list. I wonder what the actual percentage of decline in the overall seafood industry is so far. They won't, we won't know, we'll never know, they won't tell us. But I just wonder how many people are wising up. They have a string of restaurants over here, as you know, called, uh, Red Lobster. There's, there's other string. They have seafood, seafood. And I just, you know, I wonder how, how they're doing. They always look to me like there's a lot of cars there. So I guess the average, I asked, I told yeah. you a story. I asked somebody, what do you know about Fukushima? Yeah. This is not a dumb, dumb person, professional. I don't know what, what I forgot what he did. He yeah. said, Fuku, what? Well, you don't hear all this environmental outcry about overfishing so much anymore. That mm -hmm. means there's a lot less fishing going on. A lot more fishermen can't afford to go out, you know, and even with the lower price of oil, there's just a lot less activity out there because there's more and more people becoming aware of the dangers of radiation, also the dioxin from the plastics in the ocean, and all the all the waste products in the ocean. A lot more people, a lot more. You, they used to think it was the healthiest of all foods, but there's been a real reversal in thinking lately because of all the pollution uh, in the ocean. You was not aware it goes into the seafood. And lobsters have been crabs, of course. They're bottom dwellers. It's not really clear because, you know, fish are so watery. Uh, a lot of times you don't get the meetings you would get in meat, which is a lot more dense, you know. And, uh -huh. uh, right. On land animals, you know, the meat's more dense, uh, drier. Uh, you have a lot more water content. They're washed and all that. So it would reduce the detectable presence, but nonetheless, dangerous stuff in there. You bet. Especially the radioactive. Okay, my friend, that's our hour, and uh, talk to you next week. Uh, yeah. I, hope, I hope the coffee plantation well, is okay. Well, Happy New Year, and yeah. that's more of an expression of hope than it is any indicator of the actual fact on the yeah. ground that we face and in the air and the water that we face in 2015. It's getting worse. That is the news for the year. But Happy New Year. Let's try to do something to make it happier. All right, will do. Thanks for everything, as always. Talk to you uh, next week. Okay, Yochi Shimatsu, and uh, I don't know where we'd be without him. And Dana, uh, take care of yourself up there. Sub, freezing, snow, sleeping on his little rubber Zodiac, alone. That's guts, folks. Courage for all of us heroism and we will be back tomorrow night talk to you then